graph of f prime. It says find all values which f attains a relative minimum just by your answer. So here's what I would write for this one here, number 12. max at 
x equal, and you're going to fill in the blank. Now remember, listen to my definition. In function, that means we could be talking about f, we could be talking about f prime, we could be talking about f double prime. Any function has a relative max when that function changes increase to decrease. Any function has a relative max when that function changes increase to decrease. <coughs> that concept is so important that I pay five tickets if you can show me that you have a flashcard that says that, or you can honestly raise your hand and say, I know that so well I threw away the card. I didn't really need it any longer. So look at your flashcard deck. Any function has a relative max when that function changes increase to decrease. You should have made a flashcard like that for unit one or something very similar. So show me your head if you have the flashcard or you can honestly testify in a court of law that you <laughs> remember it so well, there was no need for a flashcard any longer. So any function has a relative max when that function changes increase to decrease. This is worth five tickets. Any function has a relative max when that function changes increase to decrease. Okay, five tickets. So we need a flashcard to create one. Any function has a relative max when that function changes increase to decrease. There you go. There you go. There it is. Okay. So please raise your hand if you can tell me what x coordinate or coordinates belong, you know, I should write here. Use that definition and tell me what should I be writing here. Any function, that could be f, that could be f prime, that could be f double prime as a relative max when that exact function changes from increase to decrease. Here's a picture of f prime. Please raise your hand if you can tell me what x coordinates belong right here. All paid. <coughs> All who know. So look around the room. Uh, really, look around the room. The trouble is, like, nearly everyone has the flash card, but not everyone is making sense of the flash card. We're close, though. Brayden, what do you get? Two. X equals two. Uh, Brayden says x equals two. How many vote with Braden? Two points, three for Braden. Here's F prime changing from increase to decrease. That means that F prime has a relative max at X equal two because F prime is changing increase to decrease. Okay, show me one or two of that makes perfect sense. Come on, show me one or two. So you're talking about F prime. I thought you were talking about F. Uh, what did I write on the board? F prime. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> I, I just thought you good. <laughs> show me one or two of them make perfect sense. Show me, show me, show me. Show me. <laughs> make sure your phones are away, please. Show me one or two. One or two. Okay, everyone, look, everyone's doing this, so you really got to do something. Like take a picture of yourself on this day, remembering what happened. I don't know, something. Okay, <laughs> do something. Do something to make sure that you don't forget this moment, okay? Um, go to here. Okay, I change the wording. Here's a graph of f prime. I want to know where f has a relative max. At what x coordinate or coordinates? In your hands. Who knows? Where does f have a relative max? Definition didn't change. Any function has a relative max. When that function changes, increase to decrease. The only thing that changes is we're looking at f prime. We have to somehow correlate f prime with f. So what x coordinates belong here? Let's go Sarah. Uh, Sarah says negative 5. Yes, Sarah. No. How many would agree with Sarah? Two points yes. for Sarah. <laughs> Do one or two of that make perfect sense? Come on, one or two of that make perfect sense. Show me one or two of make perfect sense. <laughs> I did, make sure you show me two. Good job, chat. <laughs> Snapping those photos. All right. If you want to come stand in front of the board and take a picture, feel free. Do it. Um, <laughs> I'll take a picture. Okay. All right. I don't want to. Uh, let's do another one. Hey, show me this. 
What goes here? Show me. Come on, come on, come on. What belongs here? Ooh, ooh. What x coordinate or coordinates belong here? So, Kenny? Negative 3 and 5. He votes for negative 3 and 5 because she looks up here at f prime and says, look, here's f prime changing from decrease to increase. Here's f prime again changing from decrease to increase. That fits my definition that any function has a relative min when that function changes to decrease to increase. And we would have said this before Kimmy said it. Boom. Two, three for Kimmy. We'll have a question. Show me one or two that make perfect sense. Come on, come on, come on. One or two. Show me. One or two that make perfect sense. There you go. We still have two more tickets for this. Nice. Um, Right. Uh, we're kind of branching off into something we're going to talk about here that's a new idea, but we'll keep reviewing here to get some more tickets. You should have another flashcard. I'll pay you five more points. The flashcard should say, any function has a critical point, any function has a critical point when that function has a tangent slope of zero or undefined. Huh? Any function has a critical point when that function has a tangent slope of zero or undefined. Uh, a couple people ask me for cards. Please, cards. Show me your hands. Okay, so any function has a critical point when that function changes, no, sorry, when that function has a tangent slope that is zero or undefined. No, you're mixing up with inflection point. That's okay. Yeah, it says, you know, critical point and flexible point sound kind of similar. So any function has a critical point when that function has a tangent slope of zero or undefined. Any function has a critical point. Oh, sorry. Any function has a critical point when that function has a tangent slope of zero or undefined. I've already had the class card. Show me your hands. Who had it or had it memorized so thoroughly you'd already thrown away the card? What if I have one now? He's like, oh, now it doesn't count. Who had it before? I memorized it. Five tickets. Cool. Um, let's test your understanding. Look here at three, please. Notice something interesting. Draw that very well. At x equal three, look up. Okay, at x equal three, the tangent slope of that prime is undefined because that's a vertical tangent. Listen carefully to the words. At x equal three. The tangent slope of f prime is undefined. We have a question on that because this slope is vertical. Okay. So the question four I want you to answer is this: f prime has critical points at x equal any function, meaning f, f prime, or f double prime, has a critical point <coughs> when that specific function has a tangent slope value that is either zero or undefined. Please you raise your hand and tell me what x coordinates belong to your, your, need to be written here. Show me. Any function has a critical point when that specific function has a slope that is either zero or undefined. So I wrote on the board, f prime, that's any function, has a critical point at x equal y. Is there a louder? Is it negative 3, 2, and 5? So Sarah says negative 3, is three one? 2, 3 is also. Uh, 3, and then 5. <laughs> you wrote negative 2, but first one. Oh, thank you. Negative 2, negative two, two but that's correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Negative 3 is negative 3. Thank you. Like so. Yes. Good. Um, how many knew this before Sarah said yeah, it? Show me. Perfect. Two points. Three for Sarah. Question: Is negative seven 
dog one? Oh, great question. Um, they don't really, sh let's read the words. The figure above shows the graph. No? Oh, here we go. This is the clue that was necessary. Sorry. Perfect question. Three tickets. The graph of F prime has horizontal tangents at negative 3, 2, and 5. So they're not really counting the fact that this is going to come back over. They're just kind of saying it's heading upwards. We just don't know. Great question. That makes sense. Yeah. It's perfect. Here we go. Okay, answer this one, please. Oh, first of all, let's do a bow. Okay, show me one or two if this makes perfect sense. Show me one or two. Come back, Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff. Show me one or two if this makes perfect sense. <laughs> Let me just say it one more time, just maybe a little differently. So, the thing that confuses people is that. The keyword is any function. So if I'm trying to find out if f prime has a critical point, the function I'm talking about is f prime. And I can just look at the graph of f prime. And I say I need to see on f prime where the tangent slope of f prime is 0 or undefined. So I notice that right here at negative 3, f prime has a tangent slope of 0. And x equal 2 f prime has a tangent slope of 0. At x equal 5, f prime has a tangent slope of 0. So the places where this specific function has a tangent slope of 0, that's where f prime is going to have a critical point. f prime has an undefined slope at 3, so that means f prime has a critical point there as well. Uh, so I'm Looking at f prime and I'm describing where f prime has tangent slopes of zero and if I, that's where f prime has critical points. If we compare that to where f has critical points, it might help. So let's do that one now. So f has critical points at x equals. Hey, hands, show me. What x points belong here? Four, four, four. Test on December 1st, 5th, or 7th. What x points belong here? Wait. What x points belong here? F has a critical point at x equal. The definition is F has a critical point, sorry, any function has a critical point where that function has a slope of 0 or undefined. So if I apply that, I say F has a critical point. When f has a slope that is 0 and 5, hey, wait a minute, I don't see f. Can't look it up. Ah, but no worries, because f prime tells me the information I need. So what numbers go here? Show me your head. Show me your head. Please, Chancellor, the F prime for like, if we were doing the 
like things from three to seven on the F prime grass, the, the F prime would go like this and then like level out and then go back up again. The is F graph is what yeah. you're thinking of. Yeah. Yes. Um, in fact, I'll draw it in seconds. Very good, Chad. Okay. You want to check the room for understanding. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Good questions. Hey, this is my statement. At these coordinates, negative five, negative one, and five, <laughs> F prime has a value that is equal to zero. So one or two times a perfect sense. F prime has a value that is equal to zero. At these, show me one more time. Oh, one more time. Okay. At these x coordinates, F prime has a value that is equal to zero. Show me. Everybody give yourself two for that. And now we go to the next statement. Let's close. Oh, please. I just have a question. So you said if the tangent slope on F prime is equal to negative five, is zero, then on S it'll also be, it'll be zero to the tangent slope. That's what I meant. On S it'll be zero. No, I didn't say that. On five. Oh, five. What I yeah. said at five is, because at X equal, let me say it back to you, let me just keep asking. At X equal five, F prime has a, oh, got you now, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, F prime does have a tangent slope that is equal to zero at X equal five. That means that the value of F double prime at x equal five will be zero. It doesn't mean that the value of f will be zero. Okay. So what I can say for sure is this. So when I'm looking here on f prime, I'm not looking at the fact that f prime has a tangent slope of zero. I'm just noticing that f prime has a value of zero. Oh, okay. And because f prime has a value of zero, I know that f has a tangent slope of zero. Okay. Is that your question? Yeah. Three tickets, outstanding. So if, uh, it doesn't have to cross the x-axis, it just has to have a value of zero. Correct. Okay. For f to have a critical point, f prime simply has to equal zero. Because the f prime's value being zero means that f's tangent slope is zero. So one or two, here, well, ready? Here's the statement. Here's the statement, listen. Okay, at x equal negative five, negative one, and five, because f prime has a value that is equal to zero, I know that f has a tangent slope that is equal to zero. Show me one or two. One or two. So two more points. Good work. Uh, I never got back to Landon's question. What's the value of f prime, Landon? Approx There's no scale, but just give you a number. Like here's f prime. What's the value approximately of f prime when the x coordinate is three? Uh, it's like three. Sounds good. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. What that tells me, Landon, is that on the graph of f, f will have a slope that's about three. Oh, so the fact that this tangent on f prime is going straight up and down, mm -hmm. that has no real effect on f. Okay. It's only on f double prime. Yes. Yes, f double prime at x equal, like, I would write this, look at me. I'd say f double prime at x equal three. Uh, that's undefined, we don't know. Okay. We don't know the value of that. That answer your question, but yes. Give it a count. So on x equals five, even though it's not going to positive to negative, it's still um, minimum, or uh, critical point. Yeah, in fact, uh, yes, perfect. Let me say it back to you. At x equals okay. five, I would say f prime's value is zero. Therefore, f has a critical point at x equals five. Would be. Yeah. However, here's f prime. F prime is positive, 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 positive. Now f prime is positive, positive, positive again. So f prime never changed from being increasing. Sorry, f never changed from being increasing. f just always was increasing. So that's why f doesn't have a relative min or relative mass. Good question. Anybody else, please? Actually, never mind. I don't think it applied, so. Okay, no worries. Very good. Sorry, did that help? Okay. Um, it was a really good question because it led into this, some new things I wanted to review. So this was a perfect review. Um, I think we're good here. 
Yeah, we're good. Does anyone have a different question you brought with you to class? Well, this one's kind of like a question in general. And it was just like going through my whole packet with some of the questions to try and figure them out. And so it's like you answer the class one thing too, but when you have like an equation, when do you know if you need to factor? Like what type of question do you know? Or, okay, sorry. What type of question do you ask or is asked and then you know you have to like find the derivative and when can you just plug in a number for x? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it is a hard question to answer though. It was like I was I was trying to like there's one I was trying to figure out and I was like I don't know if I can plug it in or I, do I have to find the derivative first and then the answer ended up I couldn't plug it in. Uh, let me see if I can give you some general guideline. Yeah, as best I can think of them. It kind of does vary from problem to problem. Yeah. Uh, so something that happens quite regularly is you have a function of L. And you need to find some x, y coordinate on L. Yeah. So then I just use the equation for L. Like if I need to find the y coordinate when F is equal to 4, I'm just going to plug 4 into the equation yeah. for F to find the y coordinate. But if I need to find the slope of the function L at some point, say 4, yeah. then I need the derivative to find the slope of that function. Yeah. Um, but if I need to find an x-y coordinate on f prime, so I just use the equation for f prime. Don't need to I don't go take f double prime. Okay. F double prime would be finding the slope of f prime. Okay, that actually, yeah. Is that clear your question? That actually, good. Please, go ahead. Well, I just, this is so, a question. Yeah. Are the limits never ending? Like, any function that for x, any function that for that, and any function that for that, like, Don't all the derivatives go to zero? Uh, no. But great questions. Can you raise eyes up here again? Look up for a second. You're doing a good job answering each other. Just look up. Everyone look up. Everyone, I guess, see your face. I mean, this is really crucial what Clifford said. Look at me. Okay, you have to memorize that the symbols f, f prime, and f double prime are only they're relative symbols. What I mean by that is you can make a damages chart that said f quadruple prime. And then the next column would say f5 prime. The next column would say f6 prime. And the chart wouldn't change a bit. I mean, one or two if that made perfect sense. It's all, you know, it's all relative. It's relative. It's, yeah. relative. it's not absolute. Does that make sense? We start with f just because we kind of got to start somewhere. But it doesn't have any special meaning. That's why when I give you the definitions, I say any function, right? Any function. So it can go on forever. Now, Landon's comment, polynomials ultimately will have a derivative at some point that is equal to zero. And then after that, the following derivative would just be zero, the following derivative would just be zero forevermore. That's not true of all functions. Uh, if you think of the sine and cosine function, it's periodic. So the derivative of the sine is the cosine, the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine, the derivative of the negative sine is the negative cosine, the derivative of the negative cosine is back to the sine. So it just repeats itself forever, it never stops. Does that make sense? Yeah, cool. That's your question. Good. Maybe let's bring a question with your class. Please. 11. Okay, did 11 last period, so I'm going to show you the results without rewriting it. Any part doesn't make sense. It's kind of related to your question, Chad. Yeah. Um, just make sure you ask about it. So here's 11 right here. They said, write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at the point where x equals 0. So I drew a picture of f. Here's f. And then I label it. I said the point I want is x equals 0. And I need the y coordinate. Well, that's called f of 0. But they told me f of 0 is equal to 2. So I know the point is 0, comma 2. I need to write the equation of the green line. So I have memorized that I always start the equation of a line with this template. And now I just plug in everything I need. I already know the x and y coordinate. I also need the slope of the green line. So I memorized it to find the slope of f. I simply use the derivative of f. So here it is. The slope, in fact, I read it like this. Look at my pen. 
this little tick mark reminds me of a tangent slope. So I say to myself, tangent slope of f when x is equal to 0 has a value of negative 3. Um, it says right there like it has a continuous second derivative. Does that have anything to do with the problem or is that just extra information? Hold on a second. It has nothing to do with part A, but because this is a free response question in FRQ, there will likely be a part B, C, and D. And I just didn't include it because we haven't learned everything we need to know yet. Okay. So I just picked out a part of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can you repeat the negative, like how you got the slope one more time? Huh? So you should have a flashcard that says, um, to find the slope of a function, use the derivative of that function. So here's my function at half. I need to find the slope of f right here. Because the slope of f right here is exactly the same thing as the slope of the tangent line. So to find the slope of f, I must use the derivative of f, which is f prime. So and I need to find the value of f prime when x is equal to 0. So here it is. I just told it. So I just simply have to use the equation. Kelsey, this is helping me. This helps some other people. When I see this, this is how I read it. I look at the little tick mark and I think to myself, oh, that means tangent slope. So the tangent slope of what? Oh, that's why they wrote it now. The tangent slope of f. The parentheses mean at. So the tangent slope of f at an x coordinate of 0 is equal to negative 3. So the tangent slope of f at x equals 0, this little slope right here is negative 3. And that will work at any coordinate. Yeah. that Yeah, that, that's just what the notation means. Okay. Uh, don't forget this one, Kelsey. The other way to read this is like this. Don't think of this as a tick mark at all. Think of it as one big symbol, f prime. So f prime at an x coordinate of 0 has a y value of negative 3. This notation, when I'm thinking of it that way, I'm thinking of the graph of f prime. And I'm thinking when I go to 0, the x equals 0, I go to y equal negative 3, and there would be a point right here. So the symbol, see this is exactly the same thing, but two different meanings. We've mentioned that before several times. So the meaning in blue is y coordinate on the graph of f prime. The meaning in red is slope on the graph of f. You see the difference? Good. Anyone else? Okay. Um, I'm going to pass out a packet. The packet is just review again. About a third of the test questions on test three are review questions. So I want to get you as much exposure as I can to AP questions because test three is not written by me. Test three is all brand new AP questions you have never seen before. Yeah, so the more, well, you know. So, um, the homework tonight will not be all of this packet. I'll send out a text telling you which specific problem. But they are just reviewed. No new concepts in this packet. No new concepts in this packet. Did you say anything about the other You can't talk about you enough. Tell me. You got so much. You got so I tell you that you're part of the conversation. We all do that every time. I've had that so many times, though. I guess what? You can I can talk to myself walking in your shop. I just say it's hard. 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 It's Thank you. Thank you. Look, you're a really cool. You're a good man. You're even better man. Not true. My sister Craig Yule. She's very kind. She's doing good, Amanda. I don't know. Excellent. Excellent. She's a good person. Yeah. 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 Yeah
she, um, I need a plaque or something for like, no one has worked harder than these people. She'd be on the plaque. Make the wall. She like really, that white would be the wall. She really is. She I worked so hard. She did. She's awesome. <laughs> Stop it. Hey, please. So much courage. Okay, one more flash card you need to have. Let's pay five tickets for them. One more flash card you need to have. I'll pay five tickets. The flash card should say this. If you already have it, you get five tickets. If you don't, then make sure you make one. Look up Lexi Sorry. Flashcard should say any function, any function has an, this is what opens us from, any function has an inflection point, any function has an inflection point when that function changes in cavity. Make sure you either have a flashcard or you're like, nope, I don't ever forget that, I don't need it any longer. It's the goal, of course, to get rid of the flashcards. Uh -huh. So any function has an inflection point when that function changes in cavity. We need a card. Any function has an inflection point when that function changes in cavity. Any function has an inflection point when that function changes in cavity. So. I've already had the card or had it, like, a boldly can declare I have that memorized over. Any function has an inflection point, oh, and that function yeah. changes can count. Five tickets. Well, I think it's like. Five tickets. Okay, please write this equation in your notes. F of x equals. X cubed minus 3x squared. Write this in your notes, please. Okay, the homework tonight is strictly review. So the notes we're taking tonight do not apply to the yellow packet. They'll apply to the next packet you get on Wednesday. We need to get kind of a head start on this. So f of x is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared. Um, we want to identify uh, where, where means what x coordinates. Where does f of x have a relative extrema? Where does F have relative extrema, critical points, inflection points, and absolute min or max? Min and max. Okay, that's what we're trying to figure out. The word where means at what x coordinates. Where does f of x have relative extreme at critical points, inflection points, and absolute min and max? Please write that down. Just using the equation. Two points. It's the key idea. Let and no self open. Um, relative extrema. Yeah, the difference, OP figured it out. Prior to this moment, we've always answered these questions given a graph. Uh, about a third of the test questions on December 1st, 5th, or 7th refer to answering the same types of questions, no graph given. <coughs> no ability to create a graph, you have to have another way. Okay. Please, Kelsey. What's the difference between relative extrema and absolute max? So, the definition we talked about a minute ago, any function has a relative max when that function changes increase to decrease. That's relative. Absolute max, a function has an absolute max at the x coordinate where the y value is higher than any other y value. So 
an example will help make more sense of that. But basically, relative max, f has a, any function has a relative max, when that function changes, increase to decrease, done. The absolute max of a function is simply the highest point. Simple example would be this. So if it's an infinity. Let's do the whole, oh, say it again. Or if it's like an infinite thing now. That one, some people would say the relative, the absolute max is infinity. Other people would say there is no absolute max because it just climbs forever. So they don't ever really ask that question on the infinite test. Okay. Right. Um, Very good. Yep. Basically, you can have a couple of relative extremes, but only one. Yes, yeah, so everyone hear that? Everyone hear that? You cannot have two y coordinates that are higher than every other y coordinate. It doesn't make sense. So only one y coordinate can be highest. You can have an unlimited number of relative max. An unlimited number of times when f goes to increase to decrease. Um, we good to hear? Yeah. Well, please, Chip. So if that happens, if the the graph you can use on like forever both ways, it can only possibly have one of the absolute min. <coughs> like you can only have either an absolute min or an absolute max because it's moving on either way. So it would have to be like, I don't know. Yeah, you've got the right idea. Yeah, you've got the right idea. Here's some common examples, Chad. Um, if a function does this, I would say to you that this function, if it goes forever in both directions, in my opinion, this function, well, okay, this function has one relative max. This function has one place where the function changes increase to decrease. This function has an absolute max at the same place. This is absolutely the highest y coordinate on the function. Uh, whether you say this, fun this function has no relative minimums, because the function has no places where the function changes from decrease to increase. Some people would say the absolute minimum is negative infinity goes down forever. Other people would say, we really don't say there's an absolute minimum because it goes down forever. Is that your question? Yeah. Good. Anybody else? Okay. And the technique we're going to learn here, as Oakley said, because we don't have a graph, and uh, let's just pull the room. We'll do secret ballot. One means you really like making graph. Like think of previous classes where you had to graph functions. One means you, you really like graphing functions. Two means, no, I never really liked it. Just curious. First day Derek's falling asleep in like weeks. It's been so well. <laughs> no worries. Okay, about 80% of you went like this. So that's good news, because we're not going to graph this. Oh, okay. So we're not going to graph this, but there's an easier way. Here's the easier way. Um, we take the derivative of the function. Write this down for me. We take the derivative of the function. We factor the function. And then we do what's called a sign pattern analysis. The name is not important. Um, see, it sounds very relaxing, right? Let's go to the spa. It's pleasant. It's not, it's not uh, sign pattern analysis. Uh, the name isn't important other than it does seem to help you remember. So you won't be tested on the name. Or we say we're going to make a sign chart of f prime. So we're doing a sign pattern analysis of f prime or a sign chart of f prime. Okay, I want the whole room to answer this. Here's Danica's chart. Here. You want 
I say the word sine, I'm referring to positive or negative. It's called a sine chart, like the sine, the positive or negative of something. So I haven't <coughs> told you, but I really think most of you can figure it out. So I want you to raise your hand if you can. Um, we're doing a sine chart of f prime, but we're not trying to really gain any information about f prime. The whole purpose is to gain information about f. Okay? So what will, knowing information about the signs of f prime, what kind of information from the signs of f prime can you gain for f? Who knows the answer to that question? Can you say that one? Yeah. So what can the sign of f prime tell you about f? That's why we're doing a sign chart of f prime. Sorry, we're doing a sign chart of f prime so that the sign chart of f prime can tell us something about f. What will the, in general, what will the sign chart of f prime be able to tell us about f? All who know, just look at that this chart. What will knowing the sign of f prime tell you about f? Amanda. Nice. If we know when f prime is positive, we'll know when f is increasing. If we know when f prime is negative, we'll know when f is decreasing. How many knew that before she said it? Tickets, three for Amanda. Questions for anyone? Are we good? We're, we're, we're talking about SIG. Yes, perfect. Yes, yeah, sine like this, not sine like sine and cosine. Yeah. Sigma. 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 Yeah, Sigma. the Sigma pattern chart. Um, <laughs> Sigma pattern chart. Um, Sigma. All right. Is the one part of forgiveness I'm still struggling with. I've got to, got to get over this. When I was like 10 years old, I'm it was a long time ago. Yeah, it's, it's an old wound there, old wound. It's pretty open, 41 years ago. I'm riding my bike, okay? And I'm, I had a newspaper route, like 10 year old kid, right? You know, delivering newspapers. What's that? Yeah, I know you don't know what a newspaper is. Okay, in the app desert news. And I got my little bag on him. I have my bike, I'm just living in it. It's a, it's a pleasant day. Okay, I'm riding through this, I still remember the exact house where the exact person who did it. I gotta get over this. This is hard, I, it just, this is bad one. Okay. I'm riding my bike, this kid, I can even tell you the name. He's actually famous in the community. He has this famous store in this community. All right, moving on. Wait, what's All right. Name? What's yeah, his name? Sorry, Cliff Kohler. All right. <laughs> that, yeah, Kohler's the grocery store. Wait, what happened? There he sicked his dog on me. <laughs> like he's just right. torn by a 14 year old kid. <laughs> <laughs> he was like 16 or 17. Yeah, he's very friendly. Guys. I was very That's, very that's what Kohler was going over there. Karma to Karma spares nobody. I'm kidding. That's hilarious. That's what it's Yeah, I felt Do you want out of business? business. Yeah. You're still in business. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, when you said sick and I just thought I was sick of it, it just like <laughs> 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 I had two. Man. The same thing happened to me. Just this guy and some friends. No. It was. It was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. It's, it's not. It's not. It's not funny. Funny. I was so angry. <laughs> So I went home. I was so mad. Called my friend. He's the chief of police. We're coming to get you. All right. <laughs> yeah. There's no statute of limitations on singing dogs on children. Yeah. So as a child, we were all child. child. Watch, watch, watch. Is everybody good to hear? Yeah. Okay. So here's what we do. We need to make a sign chart. Look. Hey. We need to make a sign chart. So draw the following. Uh, make it pretty good size. If you make it small, you'll make mistakes. Really, make it pretty good size. Little sign charts lead to mistakes. So, it's a number line. Put an X on there, just like that. Hey, draw that. Draw this. It's a number line, put an X. Now, I s we can only do sign charts with factors. So you can't do a sign chart with this version of F prime. You can't do a sign chart with this version of F prime. You must use this version. Right, please. Uh, show you in a second, don't even forget. It's easier to show when I get it written down, but don't forget. Uh, so I write down the factors of F prime. 3x and x minus 2. You write down the factors of F prime. And the next step, really, really easy. Everyone in the class can answer this. 
This is a number line. It's, think of it like a table. Like when you make a table, we just list all the different values, right? We're just listing the values sideways instead of up and down. Well, the reason will show up in a minute. Um, everyone can answer this, raise your hand if you know. What value of x, like this just means you plug in different values of x into 3x, and then you just write down what you get. Where we start with is what value of x, this is a really easy question, if you plug it in for this x, will cause this factor to become zero. Raise your hand if you know. It's, not a, it's just an easy question. Jackson. No. So if I take an x value of zero, plug it in place of x, three times zero will be zero. zero. How many knew that before you said it? Two points three for Jackson. Okay, now we just find some other values. Oh, good news. When you're making a sign chart, once you identify the value of x, which causes the factor to be zero, you don't have to do a lot of thinking anymore. All you have to do is a couple of quick tests. Over here, just say it out loud, is the value of x going to be positive, negative, or both? Negative. Negative. So any negative value plugged in place of x will cause this to be positive, negative, or both? Negative. negative. I don't test over and over again, I test once. But I can say with certainty now, that it doesn't matter if I plug in next equal negative 1 or negative 2 or negative 3 or negative 4 or negative 5 or negative a million, three times that negative value will be a negative value. And I do not care about the numeric value. All I care about is the positive or negative. That's why it's called a SIGIN chart. Okay? <laughs> Questions so far? We test over here. Just say it out loud. If we plug in some value here, Will the value of three times that number be positive, negative, or both? Positive. positive. Sign charts are like many things in calculus. Once it makes sense, it's like, wow, that's not a hard concept. It's really easy, and it becomes super useful. Then do you do the same thing for x minus 2? Perfect. So Len is going to help me here. So what value of x will cause this factor of f prime to equal 0? Positive 2. Positive 2. Again, make sure your chart's nice and spread out. So then don't put the two over here close to the zero. It causes mistakes. Yeah. Just leave a pretty good gap. The scale doesn't matter. So don't worry about the scale too much. So I know uh, land if I plug in an x equal to two, two minus two is exactly zero. Yes. So what you're reading on this chart is you're taking different x values and you're plugging them in to find out what this becomes. You just don't care about the numeric value. Are you with me? Okay. Now we just test. So you just pick some number over here. Doesn't really matter what it is. One's good. What's one minus two? Negative one. If we tried zero, what's zero minus two? So that would be negative. What's like negative one minus negative two? Negative three. Try the other side. It looks like this. We'll pick it up next time. Wait. What's that? Wait. Action. Got it. We'll start here next time. Not